Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Rent to Rent Rock Stars, where we talk the reality behind the rhetoric. And we have got a fantastic guest for you tonight. Our guest tonight has a fantastic book, a, a company. Now, some of you will know him straight away when I say this. Per person, per night, contractor digs. He's a specialist in, guess what, contractor bookings. And he's championing the hashtag Bush, book, Bush Direct, book Direct movement, creator of the Pass the Booking Facebook group, and lots more that we're going to dive into today, uh, the reality behind the rhetoric, and lots more with the fantastic Rent to Rent rock star, Mr. Theo Bailey. I, I literally cannot believe that intro. I feel to clap for myself. That was... That was that was fantastic. <laughs> oh, good, Thank good. You. It's my pleasure, and it's absolutely a pleasure to to have you have you on with us. And just want to say to you who are watching as we do this, please do give us a thumbs up. I'm sure you're going to love Theo's story, so give him a thumbs up. Also, if you've got any questions, ask us some tricky questions. See if you can fox us in the comments, and we will answer as many questions as we can tonight. Theo, Hello. I just want to. I know you live on a farm, Theo. Because I don't, I don't. I no, no, you're wrong. I don't actually live in a farm. That's one of that's one of our units that we operate. Um, oh. and, and and when it's free on weekends, summer, some of the time, um, because it's got such lovely grounds and it's got a little park in there. Um, I live in a little bungalow with mm. the five of my children and the missus. Um, so just to give the kids some some space to run around and whatnot, we'll we'll pack up and and scoot over here when we get the chance. Um, yeah, yeah, got it, got it. But it that that's lovely. And five kids, that's quite a lot. It is, yeah. It can be a handful at times. Yeah, they they look totally gorgeous though, super super cute. Mm -hmm. So let's get into this, Theo. Tell us a little bit about you about me oh dude okay um all right so i've just mentioned i'm a i'm a family man i guess first and foremost um i classify myself as a thoroughbred entrepreneur it's been what i've been doing for eons now the longest of time um i'm 38 years old and we currently have a rent to rent business. Um, well, it's it's rent to rent, rent to rent, and we've we've moved over into a bit into management now as well. Um, we do serviced accommodation, and we specialize in the contractor market. Um, mm -hmm. Before this, I was I was essentially trying to build a um, a platform to help connect potential joint venture partners. Some of you may know me to be running around with the whole JV hub thing. Um, that we spent probably the best part of a, a couple of years trying to build this platform, which was designed to, to essentially bring off market deals, the deals that you wouldn't find next to the, the nice, pretty picket fence houses and the estate agents. Um, stuff that would typically maybe go into auction, but bring these deals to surface and bring the investors with the money and connect the two. Essentially, um, it was a it was more of a technology play mm. that didn't go the way that I wanted it to go. So mm. after a few years, we kind of had to pull the plug on that because it was either do I. Do we go shopping next week or do we continue building this platform? It was it was getting to um, to to that extreme, I suppose. So yeah. Yeah. Software can be hungry. Um, yeah. As a, yeah. As a business. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So that that's brilliant. A paint in the picture for us. You're a family man, you've got five children, you're very entrepreneurial, you got into a software company, but you also been building your um your property business can you just tell us first of all um what you were were you working a job when you first left school or have you always had your own business 
Do you know what? I, I really talk about this as well. I was a bit of a naughty boy when I was growing up, so I, I didn't really ever have like jobs per se. I was always up to up to a bit of no good, but I'd I'd find my way through life. Um, the longest job I had was for just under a year as a courier. Um, I worked for CityLink before they went bust, and I was a, a clamper, a wheel clamper. Oh, that's you, was it? That was me. It was. Oh. It, it wasn't nice. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm I'm not that mean, but bloody. <laughs> I swear, I've I've seen grown men drop to their knees and cry when you're taken away their when 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 people are at their last their last ever in life anyway, and all they have is their vehicle left to their name, and you're telling them they're not getting it back. It's not. It wasn't a nice feeling. Um, yeah. It paid the bills though, which is yeah. which is what was needed at the time, you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've had a couple of questions. So, and they are pertinent to this. So, the lovely Liz has asked, "When did you start your property journey?" Oh. Okay. So, I actually bought my first property in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, it was a it was a semi like retail shop with a couple of well, I'm lying. There wasn't a couple of apartments on top. There should have been a couple of apartments on top, but the whole building was burnt to a crisp. It had oh. it had quite substantial fire damage. So there wasn't no there wasn't any doors, any windows, there was no stairs. It was literally a, a shell. shell of a no roof. There was about a thousand pigeons in there, rats, the whole nine yards. Um, I brought it in Doncaster. Yeah. Because at the time it cost like nearly next to nothing to purchase. I brought I brought it um off the back of an auction. Mm -hmm. I found it, it had gone through auction, it never got sold. I rang up the auctioners the next day. I offered them an offer and they basically snapped my my hand off and just took it. So I thought I was in the game at the point. I thought, all right, now we're in the game. And it was at that point I realized. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Like I, I, I kind of felt like I'd made maybe a mistake. Um, impulse purchase. Yeah. It wasn't the greatest amount of money, but because it was property, and I wanted to get into property, I thought, all right, this is something I can do. Do you mind um, telling us how much? I'm just totally intrigued. How much does a burnt out shell in Doncaster cost? In uh, eighteen. Quite a bit. It's about eighteen. Eighteen thousand pounds. Wow, wow! Yeah. How long it, ago it, did you say? Five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, five years ago for one eight thousand pounds, you bought this burned out shell. I'm dying to know what happened next. So at that point, I decided to um, start like trying to educate myself in in property. Um, so I went to a few networking events locally just to um, to see what I could learn, what I couldn't learn, if there was any tricks on how I could essentially make this happen. Um, I'd done about 10, maybe more commutes back and forth to the, um, to the site. And I think after maybe the second or third commute, I, I got so turned off with the whole idea. It properly, it, it flipped a switch in my head from one minute gung ho to the next minute pulling the reins back so solidly that I just I d I kind of didn't want no part of it. Um, like I, I, it, it it was the most like impulse purchase decision you could think of because I didn't have the finance to actually build out the flats, so it was only going through. Um, networking events that I, I come across this whole joint venture kind of thing and I thought well there might be an opportunity for another investor to get involved but when you got zero experience zero knowledge like I didn't even know if it was a good deal or not I couldn't have told you if the deal stacked or not you're not really that appealing to to investors you kind of look yeah. like a fool if anything um yeah 
So I, I like, I realized I wasn't really going anywhere with this and I kind of made a mistake. Um, so I winded up selling it actually to, to a friend of mine who, he wasn't massively into property, but he brought his own home. He had developed something else that was local to us in style. Um, but he's got family more up north. It was I don't think it was Doncaster, but it wasn't. It was like the, the next town near Doncaster. When I told him the problems I was going through, that kind of perked his eyes open, and we took a trip down there. And he said, "Look, he'd happily take it off my hands." So him and his sister. Do you know what? I haven't even seen it. Um, I know it's been developed out or whatnot, but this was. This was years ago now. I haven't even finished um, seen the finish the finished product, but and I luckily sold it to him. Um, for how much you get by me asking? You know, I'm just nosy. Twenty three thousand pounds. Oh, see, so you you made a bit of cash. I, I, I made some money. <laughs> <laughs> it was pennies in the end, but it 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 did, I didn't lose on it, so I was just happy to get the money back in the bank. If you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That, that 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 sounds great. So you you started off. Now, Liz has asked another great question, which is, that's a really bold start to your journey. Where did you get your boldness to start with such a project as your first? Did you have a training? Did you do some training or have a mentor? Thank you, Liz, for the question. That's a really nice question. Um, no, no training, no mentor. No, nothing. But you can, I don't know. I guess there's a thin line between boldness and stupidity, maybe. I don't know. Um, because I felt really silly after I had bought it. Um, mm. Just being so novice. And the amount of people, when I was doing my networking, that I would show show them my project on the phone. And we're, we, we've got experienced developers like saying, oh, okay, uh, that's a bit of a... You, you, You've, you've bitten off something a bit a bit more than like they they probably wouldn't even feel too comfortable going into it especially with the, the distance to travel and all sorts yeah of stuff. Um, yeah so so boldness yeah I guess it was um I felt like at the time I was going through a point in my life where I wanted drastic change. Mm. like serious drastic change and I didn't know what else I could do but dive in two-footed to force that change upon me I knew I wanted to get into property and I thought unless I I didn't know again you see right now we're doing a rent to rent business and we're doing well in our rent to rent business at that point, because I had no mentor, because I had no training, because I had no experience, I didn't even know that was possible. I'm living mm. in Slough. Everything costs big money around here as far as I was concerned. So it was a case of what can my few pennies actually afford me? So I wasn't even looking locally. Everything was, I went further than that. I was up in Newcastle. I was touching nearly Scotland. I was... I was looking at any Middlesbrough, anywhere where the pennies that I had could take me a bit further in my view. Okay, I'm going to interject, Theo, because you made this bold move. You bought this burnt out shell in Doncaster. You ended up selling and, and making uh, making some money on it. But how did you get from there to where you are today? What happened next? Okay, um, so I guess that was the whole JB Hub space where I, I essentially put every penny of the money I had into this technology and it all went down the pan. Okay, um, and then after that, you, yeah, you, so, is that when you found Rent to Rent? or Yeah, more or less, more or less. Um, so I was working, I, like, I needed to get a job. I was working in an estate agency in Windsor at the time. Mm. And my partner was doing, essentially, it was meant to be cleaning, Kelly we're talking about here, um my my life partner uh so it was meant to be cleaning but what she was doing was essentially every check-in every checkout the linen the management you name it she was doing she was basically running this guy's like service accommodation operation um so she she was running a handful of of his units for him and she was doing some some cleaning for like maybe about six or seven other hmos 
But at the time, because I was doing my estate agency work and she was really starting to get to understand the, the mechanics of the service accommodation space, we put our heads together and said, look, well, I'm going to go out and source these properties because I've got access to inventory and landlords and all of that. I just felt it would be a lot easier for me to get hold of the inventory. And she can learn how to, well, she already knows what she's doing, but between us, we can learn how to actually fill the properties because that was the only thing that she wasn't doing was it was filling the properties. Um, mm. So that was it. I set myself a, a deadline. In December, we knuckled down, we had that talk and we said, look, by end of January, we are going to have our first unit online and operating. And February, I think the 8th, we we went live on our first unit. Wow. So we just, just missed the deadline. Um, wow, I, but, I love that. Well, so, service accommodation, people know I'm not always the biggest fan because I just think it's a lot of operations. But that brings us into a question that we've been asked here, which I'll touch on now and then we can go into it a little bit further. So Alpha has asked, speaking of software, do you use software to manage your rent to rent business? We've we've built software again. So look, I, this is probably the bane of my life. Um, I, I spent a lot of money in software before and it didn't work out for us, but we're doing it again. I've just got this calling, this affinity for technology, I suppose. I love it. Um, I feel like, I think we all kind of know it's the future. It's where things are heading. It's where things are yeah. going. If you're not, if you're not digital today, you better be digital soon in the future. Um, so we've, we've built, some systems that help us like manage our our um, portfolio plus we use others like trello and channel managers and and all the rest of it um but we kind of built our own property management system that so that works. i believe um that you've got a system whereby if people want contractors for their service accommodation and contractors are a great sort of market to serve um, well, once things are back to normal, um, that you can help to hook them up between. Even even without things getting back to normal. Mm. At the moment, contractors are the strongest like players in the market at the moment. Yeah. Um, the corporates themselves that a lot of people were targeting, yeah. they like, like, you can, if you don't have to go to work, you can do your meeting on a Zoom quite easily, but if yeah. you're if you're pulling cables or if you're erecting steel or if you're like you can't lay bricks from a Zoom call, you know. So yeah. contractors <laughs> have to get on site and go to work. Um, whereas the tourists are not allowed to to move at the moment. The corporates are typically doing a lot of their work from home. The contractors have since all of this has gone on. It's literally our business has just taken off and taken a new a new lease of, lease of life, should I say? Um, but yeah, we have built a platform that helps connect contractors to hosts that are looking to to fill out their weekdays or get longer term bookings. And going back to what you was just saying a moment ago, in terms of the management side of things. Dealing with contractors drastically eradicates a lot of the management side of your business. Um, the, the consistent churn and the consistent turnover week in, week out doesn't really happen. Um, you can attract some really long-term bookings. Um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a sweet model to get involved in, I tell you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we've had some limited experience with contractors. They do make great tenants. They tend to take a longer term booking, which is how we got into it, because our bookings are mainly long term, but often they're six months and beyond. And and the guys are great. And they'll even fix things. <laughs> so, Yeah, bang on the money. We've had we've had quite a few of those. Um, we had a leak underneath one of our uh, properties in the kitchen. These guys essentially just... They were plumbers anyway, but we didn't even ask them to. They told us that it was fixed and sent us all the pictures and everything. Use yeah. their own tools, use their own materials. It was yeah. just it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great guys. And just want to call out Rupert Wallace, who runs the HMO Hub and has the HMO Hub 
sorry, the HMO Property Podcast, which I love and have been on. Hi, Rupert. Thanks for watching. And um, Jason's just saying hi as well. And somebody else is asking, is this a live right now? Yes, it is a live right now. If you are watching on the 17th of June, it's live right now. Um, so let's get into it a little bit more because you start off, how did you get started in Rent to Rent? How did you find it? And how, oh yeah, you've told us how you found it, how you got into it. It's February, you've got your first deal. What happened? Yeah, I didn't actually get the deal through um the agency that i was working with though oh, right. it, yeah no no so come december we amicably parted ways i knew that the job wasn't really for me um it 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 was driving me bonkers to be fair um and i knew where we wanted to go as a family and as a company and i didn't want to just be there but not be there having mm. ulterior motives and trying to benefit at myself by utilizing the company but not really getting the job done that i was supposed to be doing so we kind of just amicably split and i forced myself to pick myself up and go into a load of estate agents in slough because we're from slough born and bred in slough i know slough well even being i guess so what i what i identified early was there was so much um, corporate and touristy type properties on the market and hardly anybody, if not anybody at all, was focusing for the contractors themselves. Mm -hmm. So you'd find a lot of these glossy photos with croissants and orange juice on, on beds or on, on, on tables, but there wasn't anything that was really catered to contractors. Um, so if I wanted to search for maybe four or five contractors, 99.9 .9 of the results that would show me would be double bed, double bed, mm. and maybe a single bed, or double bed, two twins, and maybe um, maybe a sofa bed, mate, or should I say. Um, it was like the, the product itself to house four or five contractors wasn't actually there unless you were were like, booking a large premises um mm. so so what we done we were straight away i thought especially because of slough slough's got the largest um operating privately owned trading estate outside of europe or within europe i believe I, I forgot which one um and just if you're driving through there you'd see so many like high vis vests that they were just dotting around like lemmings they were they were everywhere um, so I'm thinking, why is there so much high-end properties that aren't really focused towards this target market, but there's so much of this target market in in the area? Um, so our first property we got, it was a two-bed apartment. Um, we put two singles in one room, two singles in the other room, and it literally, from the day we first opened the doors, we just got inundated. Like, it, it was... It was never empty. It was just so sought after because the product was right for the market and it just differentiated itself so slightly. I love that on so many different levels because you've looked at the marketplace, you've seen a gap, you've executed it perfectly. And the other thing I want to say is I'm imagining that from a normal two bed on a single let to a four, a four person, not an HMO, but it's a four person unit now, and you're charging by the week, or it might even be by the night. By the night, per, per, oh, that's per where the thing comes night. from, per yeah. person per night. That's so what we're charging. You're charging by the night. And so tell us about you know the numbers, say, on that first deal, if you can give us approximations. Okay, so it was going back some some time now, but and I'll be honest with you, that that unit probably wasn't the most profitable unit, or it wasn't anyway. Um, but we were paying £1,200 for the unit, would typically average around the £40 per person per, per night mark. But um, a fair chunk of the bookings was the Monday to Friday. So we'd only average the 16 days in the month. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd say we was, we was probably taking away anything between £500 and £700 pounds a month off of that unit mm -hmm. on, on, on a lot of the months. Other mm -hmm. months it would 
it would like rise quite drastically to where we'd get a seven day weeker and they'd be paying that same money, but we'd get an extra maybe five, six hundred. So we could break like two grand mark on a on a month on certain months if we was getting the full seven day weeks. Um, but a lot of the time it was just the sixteen the sixteen day day months. So we've got a lot better at converting like the sixteen like the four day the four day weekers into mm. seven day weekers now by offering them incentives and and discounted rates on the weekends and whatnot but mm. um, a lot of the time they won't take it if if they've got no purpose for it so yeah 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 no that that sounds great and it's interesting to know you you know in my mind i would have thought it was a lot more than the 500 or a 700 because that's what i always say that the hmo could be just as good as the sa when you look at the net but I still love the model because you can source those properties so much more easily than you could source an HMO because it's like a two bedroom flat and there are so many two bedroom flats yeah, or yeah. houses. Um, it's a lot easier to get hold of, no doubt. And so that means you can have a, a bigger business um, more quickly, whereas HMOs, you only need a few minds to have a really decent, decent business with, with rent to rent. So although, although that first unit only lasted six months. Um, we got kicked out of the block because we was the only people operating that that kind oh. of model. Um, so, so we literally it was it was nice though because we rolled out of that one straight in on the same day we moved out of that and set our tenancy up for the exact same day we was moving out and moved into another one. Um, but that was a house; it was a four bed house. Um, we slept a few more people. And we was only paying an extra hundred pounds for it, so that unit became a lot more profitable than the two bed we had uh, we had just come out of. You were only paying how much pounds? Thirteen hundred pounds for. The oh four right, bed. yeah, that's the rents are much higher there than 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 we used to hear. But yeah, that really really works then. So as opposed to five hundred to seven hundred pound profit, what what kind of numbers would you be thinking on the house? We was getting at least like. I don't know, eleven, twelve hundred pound on on average. Um, mm. Those extra two beds mm. made all the difference for mm. an extra hundred pounds. Um, mm. Like a lot of the time, two two nights would clear that hundred pounds fairly easily, uh, and then you just had the rest of the month to to capitalize on. So it was it was a much profitable model. And since then, we haven't looked back. We've stuck with the larger kind of properties. That that sounds great when you can split up the rooms and have two and even three to a room. So Charles has asked, um, I don't know if you can answer this easily, what's the average price of a property in Slough? I've been thinking of that area. Don't come to this area. Find another <laughs> area. <laughs> Go to Bristol or something. I hear Bristol's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Um, it depends on what property you're looking for, I suppose. You can... <sighs> You can find, I don't know, um, a decent two bed apartment. You could probably get for a thousand pounds now. I think we probably overpaid on on our apartment just because number one, it was our first. Um, I was banging on a lot of estate agents' doors to try and get somebody to take me seriously. We didn't have any track record. We didn't have any experience. Um, so when one came up. We, 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 I snatched the chance on it, if you know what I mean. Um, well, sometimes you've got to get started. Now, yeah, um, Theo, um, that's a really good point that you're making there. This is something that people worry about. How are people going to take me seriously? How can I get my first deal when I've got no history or experience or track record or accounts with the business? So tell us about how you did it. Was it the charm? Did you go in and just say, I'm ready when you are? <laughs> well, I thought it would, I was panicking, like, I was, I was not, I wouldn't, well, not panicking, but I was um, very apprehensive. And although I'd give myself this deadline from the end of December to the end of January, essentially one month to get this property, I didn't actually start really sourcing for, until the later two weeks of it. I procrastinated for, like the first half of the month, just not wanting to make calls and not wanting to go into agents, even though I had just come from working in an estate agent. But it's it's that whole imposter syndrome kind of thing where I thought they would have called me out for not knowing what I don't know. 
Um, but what I found is, uh, I thought I would have got more luck after this as well, because the first four agents that I went into, I got greeted by a first name basis. It was like, Theo, is that you? What are you doing in here? I'm like, oh, how's it going? Like, these are guys I've either went to school with or friends of friends or we've just known each other just being local. And I had quite a few people just, like, greet me very um, friendly. Mm. If you, if, yeah, very, very warmly. Um, but funnily enough, I didn't actually source the first property from any of those. And it was an agent that I didn't know and didn't have any connections to. And I was just blatantly honest and as raw as I could be and told him that I'd banged on every estate agent's door. Nobody's given me a chance. I like I need somebody to throw me a bone. I need somebody to give me a little olive branch. Are you gonna be that person? Because how am I supposed to get on the on the on the ladder if everybody's asking me for 12 months accounts? Okay, okay. I need to stop you because this is what people are wondering here. What do you what did you say? What did you say? You go in the door, everybody's say say it's one that you don't know anybody. Okay. I, you go I, in the I, door. I, more or less what I just said. I that literally, <laughs> as raw as that was, I said, listen, I need somebody to throw me an olive branch. I need really? somebody to give me, like, throw me a bone. How can I get on the ladder if everybody's telling me I need 12 months? Where am I supposed to get my 12 months account for if, I, if like, somebody's got, there's got to be a bit of give here. How does somebody do it? And, I think <laughs> and, and you mean somebody just says, okay, Theo, here's a bone. I, th I think he just felt, so not sorry for me, but he just got me. He was like, he he, he, he gave me the, the chance. He said, you know what? I appreciate you saying this. I think I've got a landlord that might work with you. Um, there's a property here. He showed me the property. He goes, the landlord's a lovely fella. Let me like make a quick phone calls and see if I could run it by him. He ran it by him. And lo and behold, yeah, the property was ours. Um, yeah, typical I one one month in advance. Yeah, I love that story. I think it's just a mix of realness and vulnerability. People really connect to people, and it's about building that relationship. And I just knew that you have got that X factor of getting on easily with people. So much so you've got a fan on here and it's Toy and Davidson Arrow, who we all know from Property Pillar. So hi, Toy and uh, thanks hey, for watching. How you doing, Toy and Thank you for being here. And um, it, it, hi to Jeffrey, who's also uh, watching. And we've got a, yes, you have to be raw. We can't see your name. You need to click the link that says about StreamYard. Otherwise, we can't see your name. But yes, you have to be raw. And Liz is saying, yeah, I love that. Sometimes you just have to be real and reach out in your vulnerability. And I, I totally agree. And uh, someone else whose name we can't see on the comments is saying great story. So that's why I wanted to have you on because you've got such a different perspective. So you've got that deal. You've got you've got the deal, and you t you explained us what happened. Um, but tell us how your business then grew from having that one property initially getting pushed out, having a next property, uh, but you just got the one at this time, I believe. And then tell us how it blew up. So essentially, we we found a landlord that was really like open to working with us. Um, I was helping a lady called Manny Chopra in our um it was the she still runs it today today but it's all it's obviously online now but it's the j6 property meet in slough so mm. i was helping her essentially in the back end setting up and like you know the whole organizational aspect of it we'd have a couple of meets a month just to to figure out roles responsibilities and whatnot um it was in that meeting that when you get your your little 30 seconds to stand up and say what you do and whatnot, um, when we do get back into these type of meetings, I would encourage anybody, whether you're new or not, to stand up and just say your, speak your truth, you know? Um, so we stood, we stood up, or I stood up, I said, look, we're, we're operators, we've got one unit now, and we're looking to expand locally. I'd love to connect with landlords in the in the area that potentially open to service accommodation um 
something along those lines. I can't remember the exact words that I said. And somebody made a beeline for me after after the little on the break and said, "Look, I've got a few properties in Slough. Um, let me show you one of them. Let's see how we go with that." Um, which was the one that I essentially rolled straight into off the back of giving up the, the two-bed flat. Um, working with that chap for, I don't know, maybe five, six months before he offered us another four properties. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So what I love about that part is we always talk about excuse me, Nikki and I, the importance of your social pitch and being able to say in just a minute what you do in a way that's focused on the other person, not on you, on the value that you can deliver. And that's exactly what you did there. You got up in this five minute, well, one minute pitch at the event. And then somebody said, somebody immediately said, yes, I want to work with that man. I've got what you're looking for. Maybe we can do something. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that that's very powerful as well. So it's no wonder you were successful. So then, and again, it shows the story that you can just meet one person and actually that's the door to the next five properties or more. This guy is, he's stuck with us all the way. He's offered us multiple, multiple properties. Um, he even offered us one that we took and why did I have to give back in six months? And that was sheerly down to my own, again, um, you could call it gung-ho-ness, uh, ambition, vision, drive, whatever you want to call it, stupidity. Um, I didn't do, well, I say I didn't, I did, but I, I massaged the figures to suit me because I was, I was like in awe of the building that he was offering us. Mm. So he's already, he's, he's given us, a small site of two four bedroom houses with a studio apartment attached. Um, that was going swimmingly. Um, and then on top of it, he's loved what we've done there. Cause we actually went in and done like a quite a, quite a decent refurb on the property and turned it into our stamp that we've got today and try to really brand it and come with something special. Um, he got blown away with what we done there and offered us like a, a 14 bedroom, all on suite, bed and breakfast, sitting on the like more or less the Thames River in Maidenhead. Wow. And it 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 kind of just pinged off all of my buttons with excitement. So like, yeah, I, we essentially dived in there, spent a load of money in there sorting that place out, um, and realized that our well. <laughs> Our model didn't suit that property. Um, the rates that I had agreed to was way more than what the rates we could cover. And mm. we winded up losing quite a chunk of money going in and out of that one. Um, that one taught me a serious, serious lesson. You thought I would have learned off the first one, but I guess where we earned a bit of money on that one, it, it yeah. didn't burn so bad. Mm. Yeah. So that's the, the biggest mistake that, that, you know, anyone can make, which is the numbers, the numbers. Um, but yeah, no, but so you, you pulled in and pulled out there. Now you've built up quite a big portfolio. Tell us, tell us what your business looks like uh, today. It's not, it's not even that big to be fair. Um, we've, we've slowed down on, on growth essentially, because we we're trying to um, set, we're in negotiations now to be purchasing the farm that that I guess you saw. Oh, that's fantastic! Yeah, yeah. So the idea that farm itself is um, it's got a grade two listed house on it, five five bedroom grade two listed house. It's got a couple of other flats, but it's got some barns and some stables that we're looking to convert into more accommodation, essentially, and run it as like a complex. It's mm -hmm. literally dotted on the corner of Slough Trading Estate. Um, so, so we're putting a lot of our focus and energies on, on getting that across the line and, and making that work for us rather than scaling up on a rent to rent or, uh, a management. So we're managing two properties. We've, we've only got the five rent to rents at the moment, um, seven yeah. units, 70 beds over the, the seven units. Um, we're, we're totally maxed out and full at the moment and have been for the past little while, if I'm honest, um, this COVID thing is just, even though we were full before that, but we're so like 
oversubscribed now. It's getting a bit silly. Um, but yeah. Well, let me just let me just come in again because although you say it's actually quite small, it's actually a decent size operation um, with seventy beds. And because you had the focus and that vision ahead, and and you were just. Uh, focus on the contractor market and everybody knew what you did you knew what you did you were executing it excellently that now in this hardship times or that many uh service accommodation businesses have struggled you have been flourishing so hats off to that and then on top of that what i love is the vision and foresight as well rather than grow to like hundreds of rooms uh and maybe not as much profit you've decided to focus on what's already winning and a location that you know can can win and also you're buying that property so tell us a little bit is that a normal purchase or sometimes on the rent to rent when you're renting renting like we have had some lease options exchange with delayed completion so tell us a little bit about purchasing the farm that's a, that's exactly the process we're going through at the moment um and it's essentially a lease option um it will be a delayed completion we're hoping up to at least two years Mm. um just so we can get a lot there's a there's a lot to there's a lot to pack into this site um mm. that the, the vendors been a bit of um a nuisance to the council as well so there's there's quite a bit of red tape that we've got to jump through in regards to the council and stipulating what they want to see as well mm. um which has held back negotiations to be fair mm. uh because they've got certain stipulations to do with the land out the back that they need to see cleared out and and whatnot but we, we shall get there but it's it's definitely it's not it's not it's not the simplest of deals to to get across the line i can tell you that well a lot of these deals are, are not simple but it's just having that knowledge that you were in there in the game with your rent to rent and through the rent to rent you got the opportunity then to do this lease option stroke well it's an exchange with delayed completion but you will own that asset, a fantastic property from the, the photos I've seen on Facebook. It looks incredible. And then there's so many opportunities to develop that site, to have other self, you know, service accommodation units to make it even more profitable. Definitely. Brilliant. So what has it been like working with your wife? Your partner. Challenging. <laughs> Chal <laughs> challenging at the best of times. Um, I think uh, I guess I guess because of the whole COVID thing as well, and having five young children, so we've got five kids uh, under ten at the moment, uh, nine, seven, six, four, and two, um, and because of the no school and trying to grow a business at the same time, and things have been really manic, and it's been quite quite full on over the over this COVID period, things have been been very challenging, if I'm honest. Um, but I wouldn't I, I I wouldn't be able to do it without her. Essentially, she is a core pillar, if not the backbone of to everything that goes on. Um, she does so much in regards to the the operational administrational side of the business. Um, I guess I get it easy talking to, to landlords and bringing on properties and negotiating deals and all of that. Whereas the actual day-to-day -day dealing with the guests and, and operationally making sure that the business is running swimmingly, she more or less takes a lot of that, that pain away from myself. Um, so no, it's been, it's been a great partnership, but challenging at, 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 at the best of times. Yeah, oh, wow. I'm sure if Nikki uh, was watching, she'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I recognize that story because uh, we, in our um, partnership, Nikki uh, is the operations. She makes things run. I make things happen or I start off the train, bring in the business, have the ideas, say, oh, yes, let's do this. Let's do that. Um, and obviously, I'm on the front in front of the camera. But everything that happens behind the scenes and all of the detail and the contracts and the accounts and the reconciliations and whatever else yeah, happens. Yeah. That's all, Nikki. So it's a great partnership. And um, now let's give some uh, you've given lots of great tips through your stories. But what advice would you give to people who are just getting started, who are maybe where you are when you really wanted to get into property? 
I guess the only advice I could give is similar to the path that I took myself. Um, pull the trigger. And, and, and one way, shape or another, dep- it's depending on how, how, how bad you want it, how, how, how much yearning you have in your stomach, how much desire you, you, you want to get into the game. Because um, if you really, really want it, I couldn't stop you. You couldn't. Nobody, nobody can stop you. You will make a way and find a way on how to make it happen. It's as simple as that. You'll put yourself in the right places. You'll read what you need to read. You'll speak to who you need to speak to. You'll you'll do whatever is necessary for you to make that change. Um, sometimes it just takes a real hard, solid look in the mirror and to give yourself a smack upside the head to get you moving. Um, I... I get, a lot of it, I guess, I guess they talk about in our circles as well. You, people talk a lot about mindset and whatnot. Um, and I don't, I'm not no mindset guru or nothing like that. But it is, it's the truth of it. Because you could sit there procrastinating for weeks and months and years and let your life fly by. Or you could literally, it could be like a, a, a light switch moment where something goes off in your head and enough is enough. And now you're taking action. And that little mindset shift is is a lot of the time all it takes. You don't need skills beyond belief. You don't need knowledge beyond belief. You need a bit of gusto and some guts to get get off your backside and get moving. Um, sorry to be as as as, but that's to me. That's what it takes. It, it just needs to something to switch, and and you're gone. What yeah. Can- yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, uh, Liz has commented here at some point, you just have to remove your security blanket and just go for it at all costs. And I, I, I agree with that. And um, I know that you do, Theo. And let's say hi as well to Petra, who made a brilliant comment later, uh, excuse me, earlier. Uh, g- great to see yeah. you, Petra. Hey. Um, and just for any of you who are thinking, what, rent to rent who? Uh, we have got the the free guide and masterclass below if you want to get started and just understand what is this all about. Um, and let's coming back to you. You've told us about your situation now and your advice about getting started. What would you think has been the best thing about you getting into property and starting up the business that you started for you, for you and your family? Oh, wow. Um, it's allowed me to, although I've been a, a, a big dreamer already in life, I suppose, um, it's, it's given me the, the foundation and security to dream even bigger now, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, <sighs> Yes, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. That's a good question. It's a fantastic question, but I feel like it's give us the the secure the security and the ability to to just to just dream a lot bigger. Before I didn't know where whether I was coming, whether I was going, what I was actually going to be when I grew up. Even though I was a grown ass man already, it's like, but having 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 what we've got working as well as it's working has just truly just it's 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 give me a different level of fire in the belly um it's it's it's, it's truly fired me up mm. and i totally agree with this comment and petra has said i love your honesty and your openness about getting started i think i think the way that you've expressed things is really it's really touched it's really touched my heart because i i can see how much of a a difference it's made to you but you move other people as well you're an inspiration uh for for other people as well oh thank you and thank you petra yeah and uh i just want to thank you theo for coming on sharing your story so honestly and openly and i think sometimes when i'm talking to people about getting started it's tempting for them to see somebody who's just a few years ahead of them not because i i we or we have been doing this for four years now as well which i think is similar 
you bought your property five, five years ago and then soon after that you started in rent to rent and what I try to in, explain to people is your life can change beyond all recognition within five years you can go from someone who's on a nine to five doesn't really know about property to someone who has got a property portfolio or someone who's managing in your case you know over 70 rooms isn't it someone who's buying a property on a creative strategy without a mortgage whereas previously you may not even have known that that existed so um so if you are watching and you do think to yourself or listening um and you do think to yourself do you know what i want to want to get started get started <laughs> definitely just do it bite the bullet yeah well um oh another uh comment here from rohan saying the value of this was amazing thank you much appreciated and thank you yeah. for allowing me to 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 say my say my piece i suppose tell my story yeah. No, it's it's brilliant. You have made your own luck happen. You started off. You said in school you were you know a bad boy. Um, so, but naughty, what I naughty, naughty, naughty. 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 I, I've, I've twisted it up slightly. I've twisted it up slightly <laughs> a little bit. Put a cherry on top of it. Uh, but you know maybe. But you've changed everything around, and you put all that energy and drive into setting up this business and i know that you'll be successful and i'd love you to come back on uh, again and talk to us and and people are just commenting like crazy now just saying that it's it which it is it's a very inspirational story and liz has said great session thanks both inspirational story and uh jason has said uh, great listening to your story theo thank you thank you everybody and um some petra's got her second property and uh, that's two in eight months uh congratulations petra so well thank you theo for joining is there anything oh we need to let people know about about you and where they can catch up with you okay um i'm i'm on the social channels but what I would like to say, I suppose, um, I'm not sure if this group is predominantly HMO focused or if there's there's people in the group that are focused around the serviced accommodation space. But if you are, I would love, number one, for you to come on the platform. Um, that's pppn.co.uk. If you're looking to get more contractor bookings, long-term bookings, um, I'd love you to get your, like, list your inventory with us. That will I in I suppose number one, it the more inventory we have on the R, oh, beautiful. The more inventory we have on the platform, the um, the better experience our clients get. The better experience our clients get, the more money they start spending, um, and it's a continuous cycle, and everybody wins off the back of it. So, so you can you can definitely find me at pppn.co.uk as well. We've got a few a few places where you can connect with us via messenger or support or or whatnot. So so that would be fantastic. Brilliant. Well, thanks, Theo. And just one final question that's come to me that I haven't asked you yet. I don't know if you're into books, podcasts, or if there's any particular book or podcast um, that has really uh, inspired you that you would just say is one that people should uh, check out. Um. I think I think I think I even mentioned it on you've asked this question recently or you've commented on a question recently that I I put um yes it is called what's it called again I feel like I need to what's the damn thing called that's the problem with live sometimes sorry and I listen to it all the time but my mind has literally just gone blank hold on one second yeah no that's fine i'll tell you about um the ones i was gonna say i'll tell you about the ones that i like but um i'll be mainly listening to go on indie hackers indie hackers I've got it now. yeah I just, I just, indie, indie hackers. hackers okay so check essentially go on yes now i was saying it's essentially it's 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 a technology again it's around technology plays and how you can 
start a technology company with with next to not like bootstrap a technology company so it's not it's not about getting masses of funding like the facebook's and whatnot and it's just how you can start a small tech company like bootstrapping it all the way so it's a it's a brilliant podcast brilliant brilliant and um obviously <laughs> um what was I going to say? Uh, we have our podcast now called the Rent to Rent Success Podcast. So do check us out. We're on Apple and all the places um, and at rent to rent success.com slash podcast. Um, but for now, it's goodbye from Theo. And goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye from me. Thank I will see you again next week. Bye for now. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs>